Hi there from Hawaii. It's Christmas 2007 and I want to support Naomi Wolf in her attempt to wake up America. In fact, that has been my my guiding that has been my guiding pole star ever since I started teaching in the Peace Corps in 1969-1970 in Venezuela when I first realized that I was representing uh, the American dream which wasn't really supporting me as the American dream. I wrote a book about my discoveries called Uncle Tom's Classroom and I'd like to read to you a little bit about how I came to understand what was really going on in the name of uh, the American dream. As a teacher, loving America, loving the American dream, the myth of America, uh, it was shocking to me to wake up and realize that it wasn't, things were not as they seemed. First, however, I think I'd like to show you sunset over Waikiki, which is just beautiful tonight. Hawaii is definitely one of the beautiful places in America. It was a kingdom up until the late 1890s and uh, the businessmen that wanted to take advantage of the economic abundance of these islands stole it, deposed Queen Liliokulani and took it over even though President Cleveland had already signed a document and agreed to never ever depose the sovereignty the family the royal family King Kalakaua Queen Liliuokalani and the royal Ali'i of Hawaii anyway Hawaii is now being overdeveloped like every other area that Washington DC the new Roman Empire has taken over as you can see but it's still beautiful and nothing can cover up the beauty of Hawaii anyway let me read to you something from my book Uncle Tom's classroom how one public school teacher awakened his students to the cosmic super self within I named it after Uncle Tom's cabin because I realized to my chagrin I realized that I was actually involved in uh, brainwashing my students in the name of American history that the history that I was supposed to teach in my middle school AP Janini middle school was in fact not true it was a story of an empire a growing empire that I was supposed to uh, convince my students was the American dream. It's not the American dream that I grew up believing in and feeling as my destiny. And here I'd like to read to you something that I wrote. I became a teacher because I love learning about and sharing the wonder, glory, and power of great ideas. I love watching how beautiful ideas, values, and ideals have the power to grow into three-dimensional reality. And I admire the way the original, albeit mythical, American dream was based on great ideals like life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all. The amazing promise of freedom filled me with pride when I first studied it back in the 1950s. I grew up feeling profoundly grateful, as I know Naomi did and still does, to be born the lucky beneficiary of what we came to feel in our hearts was this wonderful American dream. Learning how the Bill of Rights and the Constitution supposedly guaranteed me a lifetime of freedom to enjoy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness convinced me as a young boy in Pennsylvania, in Meadville, Pennsylvania, that I was truly blessed to live at the perfect time and in the perfect country. And here I quote Thomas Wolfe, right here where he says America it is a fabulous country a place where miracles not only happen but where they happen all the time I was born in 1944 and raised during the optimistic post-war years when anything seemed possible for America 
I was brought up, as I'm sure many of you were, to believe that America was the greatest hope on the planet for freedom, equality, and justice for all. I was educated into an absolute and unshakable confidence in the high ideals of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, and I firmly believed that my life in America would eventually prove these words to be absolutely and completely true. I knew I was born free because I was an American. I had freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and I was equal with everyone else. I was told every year that I studied civics and social studies in the public school system that I was guaranteed a whole array of individual rights, which allowed me the liberty to pursue happiness wherever that led. I really believed that I was living in a free country, and I loved the ideal, the ideal, the cultural mythology of America the beautiful, my country tis of thee, with all my heart and all my soul and all my mind. I was truly a Yankee Doodle Dandy when I joined the Peace Corps to follow John F. Kennedy's dream when he said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Out there, the bells are ringing. It's 6 o'clock in Waikiki. Anyway, I continue from my book, page 29. As they say, however, in some circles, things are not always what they seem. And I now realize that the great freedoms I once believed were my absolute divine right, as guaranteed by the United States government, do not really exist in their pure form anymore. Perhaps they certainly never did exist. Perhaps they never did exist. Certainly, after the Patriot Act, we can be pretty sure they don't exist anymore. And this is the reason I resigned from the public school system to write Uncle Tom's Classroom. The idealistic promises contained in our Declaration of Independence, Bill of Rights, and Constitution are not being realized, especially in the way, and this is the point of the book, we treat our teachers, students, and parents in our public school system. It may sound shocking, but the public school system, which was supposedly built to foster democratic free thinking and democratic principles, has actually become a dictatorship for both students and teachers alike. Both adults and kids within the system are now being treated like Uncle Tom's. They are expected, or we were expected, to behave, conform, and follow the program. We are being told, or we were being told, what to do, what to think, what to focus on, what to believe in, and what to expect of life. So we became part of the human herd mentality that dominates much of the planet today. My 30 years of teaching in the public school system sh have, has shown me that my students and I were not offered true freedom of speech or equal justice under the law. We have not been allowed to follow, as Joseph Campbell said, our bliss. We were not allowed to follow our bliss. We were not allowed to explore the parameters of who we really are or even discuss the multidimensional purposes and mystical and mysterious meaning of life itself. We not only have been given, we have not only not been given the liberty promised us by our Constitution, we do not any longer have our Bill of Rights. Our public school system has degenerated into an indoctrination center for producing good little capitalistic worker bees, rather than being a platform for launching our children's minds and hearts towards their highest and best dreams. Our public schools have become much more like cultural concentration camps than creative centers for free speech free discussion, free self-exploration, free self-education, free self-realization, and full self-actualization. I love the idea of free education, and I love the idea of the power of learning. The Course in Miracles actually says that learning is our greatest human power. And I know that there are thousands of brilliant, brilliant educators in the public school system who are dedicated truly heart and soul to helping children learn the basic skills, learn all the skills necessary for creating a happy and productive life. If it wasn't for such great teachers in my own life, I wouldn't be where I am today. 
But now I feel somewhat like Neo in the movie Matrix in that I have awakened from the cultural dream, or I should say nightmare, just enough to see that